I'm Aaron Baker from PhoneDog.com and it's a versus battle between the LG G2 and the Moto X. Let's put them together and see which one comes out on top. Man, I love a good versus battle and I think you do too, so I think you're going to like this one a lot because it's dealing with two very popular Android handsets on the market. One on the left side, the LG G2, two on the right side, the Motorola Moto X, which are both very popular high-end Android phones that are appealing to a lot of different people. Let's do a quick roundup of the specs. Let's talk about what makes these different, what makes them kind of similar, and we'll come out at the end saying which one is the must-have Android smartphone in this versus battle, which is very similar to the dogfight, but it's one part as opposed to two. Before we go into it, special thanks to my partners at Best Buy Mobile for giving us devices like the G2, like the Moto X for use in our One Paw Bandit giveaway game. When you go into Best Buy Mobile to get either of these devices, you'll walk out working and make sure you walk out with everything set up, walked out the door, you know, you got your email set up, your web set up, can't complain. All thanks to the boys in blue, as I like to call them, at Best Buy Mobile. So here's the LG G2 spec-wise, pretty powerful all around. You're looking at a 2.3 gigahertz quad-core Snapdragon 800 CPU, 5.2 inch 1080p HD display here, a 13 megapixel camera on the back with 1080p HD video recording capabilities and optical image stabilization. You'll notice the volume rocker and power button are also on the back, making it a little bit of a departure from the traditional look and feel of an Android smartphone. Your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is at the bottom combined with your micro USB charging port and speakers, of course. And then you've got your on-screen buttons, as you can see here, 4G LTE capabilities on all of the carriers. This is the AT&T version, which you saw with the logo on the back. And of course, AT&T's 4G LTE indicator. It's running Android 4.2 Jelly Bean with LG's UI and it's packing a non-removable 3,000 milliamp hour battery. The Moto X is a little bit different because it's one of the first devices that was designed by Motorola, but you can really tell it's got a really nice hand of Google in it, if you will, with the stock look and feel and the overall cleanliness of the device itself. It's a very pure device, not necessarily stock Android, but very, very, very close to it when you look at it versus other devices, namely the Nexus line of smartphones. This is packing a 1.7 gigahertz quad core Snapdragon CPU with Motorola's X8 architecture here. So you're rocking and rolling behind the scenes with Motorola's stuff. You've got a 4.7 inch 720p HD display on this device. Very pocketable, very easy to keep around in the pocket and use on a daily basis in one hand. You've got of course, your camera on the back, 10 megapixel camera with 1080p HD video recording capabilities. Battery wise, you're looking at a 2200 milliamp hour battery, 4G LTE connectivity on AT&T. And I should point out also that AT&T, at least right now, has exclusivity on what's called Moto Maker. So you're obviously noticing that the back of my device and the accents both around the camera ring and on the buttons themselves, a little bit different from traditional smartphones. Moto Maker allows you to customize the back plate, select between two colors for the front plate, and of course, do your accents around the side sides here as well. Moto Maker is a customization option online and right now it's exclusive to AT&T though if rumors are any indication it'll come soon to Verizon Wireless and I expect at some point in the future to other carriers as well. This one comes in black and white depending on your particular carrier as you can see here the AT&T logo on the back. Let's dive right in. You can see first of all the screen size difference on both of these units and also, also rather you can see the back and the way that they look. This one's a little bit curved both on the sides looking at it from a landscape perspective and then looking at it from the top to bottom, you can see it's curved there as well. It makes it really easy to hold in the hand. It gives the Motorola logo here a nice natural place for your index finger to rest for long phone calls. So really from an ergonomics perspective, a very comfortable device over here for long phone calls, for using it while you're on the road, perhaps sitting on an airplane, typing with one hand, really a comfortable device to use. Over here, definitely on the close, I should say, definitely close to being on the big side. LG in the presentation in New York City a few months back said that 5.2 inches based on their research is the perfect screen size because it's right at the edge of being too big for one-handed use but still gives you that maximum screen real estate making for a great experience in terms of content consumption. So that's why they chose 5.2 inches and I can use this with one hand. Granted I have pretty big fingers and pretty big hands but I can use this with my one hand and not have a problem. We're running Android 4.2 over here, Android 4.2 over here as well. And you can see, even though it's running the same version theoretically of Android, very different thanks to LG's user interface versus Motorola's pretty light customizations on the Moto X. You can see over your applications and widgets tabbed out like they are over here on this near stock version of Google, or of Android rather. And then you've got your search button shortcut. Then you've got a shortcut here to delete applications on the fly 
on the AT&T LG G2. Out of the box, as you would expect, you get a lot of AT&T stuff on the G2. Amazon Kindle, AT&T Code Scanner, Drive Mode, Family Map, Locker, Battery Manager, Navigator, all that jazz device help, data manager, and more. Over here, you do get some of that stuff. AT&T Locker, as you can see. Motorola's Assist application, which is very helpful, we'll talk about in just a few seconds. My AT&T, and then you'll see, that's about it on the AT&T side. Some Google stuff on both of these devices, obviously, with it being Android, but some of the applications that I like, we'll talk about those starting right now. Motorola's Moto Assist is fantastic on the Moto X, and again, if you look at both of these devices, you can really see kind of an overall message that's very different between the LG G2 and the Moto X. Moto X is very much a quick, minimalist look and feel. This is very much maximizing the software value adds, and we'll talk about that in just a second, but Motorola Assist is great all around. Yes, I'm in. We'll go ahead and take a look at it. You see driving, meeting, and sleeping come up on the screen. Three things we do a whole lot of in average adult life. So driving, when I click that to turn it on, I can stay focused on the road, and I can say, you know what, talk to me. When I'm on the road, I can turn on GPS, which I'll have to do to activate it. Go ahead and hit agree, and I'll read, or rather it will read text messages, it'll tell me who's calling, and I can do a quick reply if I want to, I can resume music play. So this is great, it works with the accelerometer in the device to determine when you're at driving speed and when you are, now that it's turned on, it kicks it into driving mode. Meeting down here as well, it takes a look at my calendar and says, hey, you got a meeting from one o'clock to two o'clock today, we'll go ahead and kick the phone on silent while you're in the meeting so you don't get interrupted. A great feature there as well. Sleeping over here, get a good night's rest. As you would expect, you can select a certain time, 11, let's say to six, and I can silence my phone with the exception of important calls, and I don't have to worry about doing that every single night. It'll just automatically do it when that's activated. So a nice little touch over there. Taking a look at the applications over here, really some nice software value adds over on the LG G2. Some of my favorites include, and we'll go to display here to take a look. I can change, of course, the font type, the font size. So the G2 is all about personalization in the software. Software, whereas I feel like the Moto X is more about personalization via the external look and the external feel. So a little bit of a different message there depending on what's more important to you, the look and feel or the internal, or I should say the software itself. Smart screen here, screen stays on when phone detects your face, smart video when you look away from video, the screen pauses and allows you to look away and then look back and continue your video work. Notification LEDs as well, there's one on the front of the device and one on the back as well around the power button, so you got a two for one notification light there, and I'll go ahead and flip this back into portrait mode. And we'll go down through here and take a look at some of the other goodies here. You've got, of course, your sound, a lot of different customization options, and one of my favorites on the G2 or LG's user interface from a broader perspective is the ability to change your individual applications. So let's say browser, for example, I can press and hold that, click right there, and you'll see I can change my icon here, and I can go and say, you know what, I want my icon not to be a globe, but to be a B for browser. So I can click OK, and you see it pops in there right there with a new icon. So really gives you the option between that and of course your typical stuff as you would expect, text messaging, box colors, you've got a lot of different options for customization here. Conversation theme, and I can change the background wallpaper to that, I can change the bubbles to that, or even that or that, and you can see a lot of different options as you move through this device to customize on the software side. So really cool feature over there, and I think that's what distinguishes the G2 from some of the other high-end devices in the market, and particularly in this versus battle between that and the Moto X. Now, one thing I like about the Moto X, jumping back really quickly here, it's got a really cool feature, well, two cool features, I should say. One is OK Google Now, and then the other one, which we'll activate that and take a look at in just a second, but the other one is the ability to type a text message from your computer using Motorola's Connect software. So it's a browser extension that works through Chrome. I can install that and from there I can pair my, or configure my phone with it rather. And I can see my missed calls and my text messages and in the case of messages, I can reply back via my computer. So I'm the king of having my phone on silent because I'm in meetings, I'm on calls, I'm shooting video. And I usually flip it upside down when I'm doing that. For whatever reason, it ends up upside down after a call or something like that. So I either don't see the messages or I'm in the conference room across from my office. With Motorola's Connect or Moto Connect, I can access my messages without touching the device and respond back and forth real time, which given I'm usually on email, I'm usually on my computer presenting or doing something like that. So I can do it right there from the device itself. And when I get a phone call, it shows up on my computer real time as it's showing up on my phone, or near real time, I should say. It's about a second behind in real life, but near real time on the Moto X. And of course, with the Moto X, you can say the phrase, okay, Google now, and activate 
that little feature as well, which gives you the ability to call from using Google Now and message using Google Now and check the weather and things like that. And it's recording everything I say and trying to open a Google search. But you get the idea. It's mentioned in the Motorola advertisements for Moto X, and it's a nice feature on the device. It's called the anti-lazy phone feature, as I like to call it. Let's take a look at cameras here. 10 megapixel camera over here, 13 megapixel camera over here. There is a software update rolling out of the Moto X to make the camera better because it did suffer from some, from some issues rather at launch and it is better now with the update. So we'll take a look here and we'll shoot a quick shot of the G2. You can see I can move from the live camera itself directly into the gallery and from the gallery I can edit the device or edit the image rather just by clicking right there. I can change it to vintage, kind of like an Instagram like look and feel here with black and white, punch, none, bleach, instant, all latte, blue, lots of different options here to crop and add a frame and more from the device itself. Now over here, optical image stabilization with a 13 megapixel camera, and you've got a wealth of options here, a cheese shutter, color effect, white balance, ISO, and more, and including some really nice modes like HDR, beauty shot, dual camera, which allows you to use the front and rear facing camera here. Don't need to see that. And I can move it around wherever I want to, and from there I can change the actual frame as well, just by clicking here and going to stamp, oval blur, instant, and more. So for example, it brings up the date in that case. So really a nice camera all around. There's a lot of features here. It's very feature rich with time catch shot, intelligent auto and more. So if you're looking for a camera that's not only good and has optical image stabilization but gives you a wealth of editing options within the camera app itself, it's really a nice choice. Now it is a versus battle. One winner has to be declared. The winner of the versus battle is the LG G2. It offers a wealth of software features. The latest iteration of the Snapdragon CPU, the Snapdragon 800 CPU, it's actually the first device to launch in the US on a carrier with Snapdragon 800, followed pretty closely by the Galaxy Note 3. So it's a nice CPU, good amount of RAM, a nice big display that's 1080p, great software value adds and availability on multiple carriers in an existing configuration, whereas over on the Moto X, a great device all around that's really pocketable and really nice, but Moto Maker, only available right now on AT&T, and within that, it is paired back and very minimalistic, but I think for a lot of people, those software value adds really make the experience. Keep it locked on Twitter or right here on PhoneDog.com as well, but I'm on Twitter at PhoneDog underscore Aaron. I'm on Facebook at Facebook.com slash Hi Aaron Baker, and on Google Plus at gplus.to slash phone dog. Thanks for watching. More to come in not only versus battles, but just Android phones and iOS phones and Windows phones in general on phonedog.com. So you'll want to stay tuned, my friends. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.